Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the Metroid franchise, but I do think it's a good series and it does deserve recognition. Which is why I'm so happy that Metroid Prime 4 has finally been confirmed to be real and wasn't just cancelled like the SpongeBob episode Space Bob Invader Pants. Who knows where I'd be today if it was the other way around. Making a TV show isn't a mundane task. A lot of work goes into it, especially depending on what kind of show it is. There's writing, storyboarding, directing, producing, editing, pre-production, post-production, and it's not surprising that, as a result, sometimes episodes that were planned for a show had to be cut altogether. Every TV show has some episode ideas that never came to officially be born and shown to the public eye. Sometimes that show gets cancelled before an episode idea gets to become a reality. Sometimes the crew loses steam while making that episode and decide to just cancel it. And sometimes there's a rule behind the scenes that prevents that episode from being made. But it's not always a total loss, as sometimes a scrapped episode idea will resurface in a different episode. Spongebob is no different. Being around for 25 plus years, it would be shocking if there wasn't an episode that was cancelled. So let's take a dive into episodes that were never completed and shelved in some way. Now this is just a discussion of cancelled Spongebob episodes that we know about. What's known online as of June 2024, which means it's likely that more will be revealed over time. I'm also not going to talk about episodes that had a different plotline originally, but was changed before the episode officially aired. For example, episode 328 in Spongiac from season 8 is about Spongebob having trouble falling asleep and goes over to Patrick, who ends up making him stay awake inadvertently. The original storyline was Mr. Krabs having a nightmare where he was turned into a mustard dispenser. That plotline was changed over time, and the episode became what we have today. So that won't be discussed here. Also, I won't be talking about this Spongebob and Ren and Stimpy crossover short here, because it's not an episode. And finally, I don't know the main reasons as to why they were cancelled, so this is just speculation. Let's start off by talking about the Spongebob pilot. Episode 1, Help Wanted from Season 1. While this was the final series premiere that we got, there were some other proposed ideas for a pilot. Five of them, all of which were cancelled. Those alternate pilots were Salty Sodas, The Krusty Mobile, Overbite, Patrick and the Chum Bucket, and Muscle Beach. All these titles were only working titles, and the episodes were untitled at this time. Salty Sodas was about Spongebob trying to secretly drink Krusty Krab sodas behind Mr. Krabs' back. He drank so many, he became bloated and started to hover, and Squidward had to hide the floating Spongebob from Mr. Krabs and Pearl. The Krusty Mobile was about Mr. Krabs transforming the Krusty Krab into a giant ship that shoots Krabby Patties around town. Plankton got jealous and tried to do that idea himself, leading to an all-out battle that Plankton would lose because he ran out of chum ammo. Of course. Overbite was about Spongebob becoming self-conscious about the gap in his teeth and tries to change it. Nobody notices him, so he goes to Patrick to inflate his lips for some reason, which causes Spongebob to go to the hospital, and Sandy visits him to see that his buck teeth are back to normal. Patrick at the Chum Bucket was about Patrick being jealous of Spongebob and Squidward's jobs and uniforms, so he works at the Chum Bucket. Plankton tries to use Patrick to steal the secret formula, leading to Mr. Krabs telling his employees to not mention Patrick, resulting in Spongebob and Patrick's friendship being ruined. All of these sound like interesting ideas, but I don't think they would have worked as a pilot per se. They could have worked as regular season 1 episodes, but I'm so happy with the pilot we got. I know that the pilot is used as a pitch for the show, and they could remake it to be consistent with the style of the rest of the season, and they can have another episode as the official pilot that airs, but Help Wanted needed to be the official pilot. Sorry. Look at me! I'm naked! Taking these ideas at their base level, Salty Soda sounds like the least interesting because it feels like barely anything happens. But to an extent, I would have liked to see it because all the other pilot ideas had concepts reused for the future. Spongebob being self-conscious of his gap and buck teeth were reused for episode 482, Mind the Gap from season 12, where Squidward seals the gap between his teeth, which makes Spongebob sound cool. 
Say, without a gap, my voice sounds almost cool. The mobile ships that fire food from the Krusty Mobile were reworked for the mobile restaurants for the Krusty Krab and Chum Bucket in episode 190, 20,000 Patties Under the Sea from season 5. Patrick working for the Chum Bucket later resurfaced for episode 78, the Fry Cook Games from season 2, where Patrick represents the Chum Bucket in the Fry Cook Games, and when he's actually an employee doing various things, most notably coming up with a slogan for the Chum Bucket in episode 238, Chum Bucket Supreme from season 6. And Patrick being jealous of the Krusty Krab uniforms was reused in episode 234, No Hat for Pat from season 6. The Muscle Beach pitch is pretty interesting. In this one, Spongeboy and Sandy go on a date to Muscle Beach. Spongeboy tries to impress Sandy, but it doesn't go well. And he runs into a rival, Larry the Lobster. Larry threatens Sponge, and Sponge runs for his life. Sandy finds Larry because she was looking for Sponge herself. Sponge comes out of hiding and is crushed seeing Sandy walk off with Larry. Sponge sings a melancholy song when he thinks he lost his love. Larry hears this song and is immediately swooned by it. Everybody on the beach likes this song and copies Sponge's style as a result. Sandy loves the song even though she didn't know it was for her. They get in the car and drive home and Sponge says he likes Sandy and Larry pops up from behind crying. Sandy says she likes Sponge too, bows and karate kicks Sponge Boy who is just happy that he has Sandy. Now this episode feels surreal to know that it was a premise for this show. Knowing that Steven Hillenburg didn't really see Spongebob and Sandy as an actual couple and seeing Larry as a rival to Spongebob, it seems that this was scrapped in favor of Help Wanted, but elements of it were reworked for episode 5, Ripped Pants from season 1. In that one, Spongebob is jealous of Larry's strength and wants to impress Sandy in some way, which doesn't go as planned. Larry doesn't hate Spongebob in this episode, he sees him as a friend, an acquaintance at the very least. The song at the end feels much more memorable than it did here in the pitch, and I prefer seeing Larry how he is in the ending here, instead of blubbering over Spongebob's song. It's definitely surreal seeing this as a pitch, seeing that Sponge and Sandy were actually going on a date instead of how they're just best friends as they are in the final episodes. Steven Hillenburg probably changed this because he preferred Spongebob having no romantical interest to keep things more simple for the show. I respect that, but I would have loved to see this episode even if it didn't end up being the pilot. And the Muscle Beach name was reused for episode 22, Muscle Bob Buff Pants from season 1, during this scene when Spongebob shows up to the beach with anchor arms in front of other bodybuilders working out. Now let's move on to episodes that could have come out at any point in the series. Like an origin story. Yeah, they did have planned origin stories for Spongebob and Pearl. Spongebob's origin story would have explained why he's a square kitchen sponge since his mom, dad, and grandma are actual sea sponges. Pearl's origin story would have explained who her mother is. Former writer for the show, Richard Purcell, confirmed he wrote them, explaining that Spongebob started off life as a normal sea sponge until he was taken out of the ocean and had his head carved into a square shape by the Cyclops. These were never approved because those were things Spongebob's creator Steven Hillenburg wanted to keep secret, especially who Pearl's mom was. They were some of the rules Hillenburg had set for his series from the very beginning. Alongside no spin-offs. The Spongebob origin story contradicts the flashback from episode 240, Truth or Square, from season 6, where Spongebob was shown inside his mom's belly while she was pregnant with him, and he was a square there too. Daddy, daddy. But who knows in the series where this would have taken place. Like his birthday. Oh. Back in season 2, an episode focused on Spongebob's birthday was proposed, with the working title, Spongebob's Birthday. This would have been about Spongebob thinking his friends forgot his birthday, when in actuality, they were planning a surprise party for him. Writer Jay Lender turned this down because he found it to be too cliche and thought it would end the show. Oh, that's why the show is still on today. The idea of Spongebob's birthday was reused for episode 486, Spongebob's Big Birthday Blowout from season 12, which was made as a special episode to celebrate Spongebob's 20th anniversary. Never mind. 
Let's jump forward to Season 9, the season that took the longest to air. The show was put on hiatus so the crew could work on the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water. After Episode 360, Spongebob You're Fired from Season 9, there were three episodes that were confirmed. Dueling Picnics, Crab's Army, and Space Bob and Vader Pants. Out of these three, Dueling Picnics was the only episode that officially released, albeit renamed to Company Picnic. Crab's <laughs> Army was about Mr. Krabs thinking SpongeBob and Squidward were slacking on their jobs and decided to put them through his own personal boot camp. This was real, as confirmed by current showrunner Vincent Waller, but it wasn't completed because the crew decided that idea wasn't worthy of being made into an episode. While that was only an 11 minute episode, it would not have worked as a 22 minute episode titled Space Bob and Vader Pants. Space Bob and Vader Pants was a 22 minute episode where Spongebob and Patrick become fascinated with extraterrestrial life, so they asked Sandy to build a device that can contact them using the smell of Krabby Patties. Former Spongebob storyboard director and writer Casey Alexander confirmed a plot point where aliens find themselves with the Krusty Krab wanting Krabby Patties, but Mr. Krabs won't accept their currency, so they take the Krusty Krab into space and Spongebob cooks Krabby Patties for them. Like Krabs Army, this was real, but upon the ship to sponge out of water, this episode was shelved and the idea was never completed. The voice actors never recorded the dialogue either, and it wouldn't be remade at all. Me personally, I think this episode sounds interesting, and I wish it could have been completed and officially released. In season 11, there was a 22 minute special, episode 53, Goons on the Moon, where Spongebob, Sandy, Pearl, and Squidina go to the moon and try to do research for Sandy's science scouts. This episode was promoted as a Christmas episode called Space Bob Mary Pants because Santa shows up in the last third of the episode even though that's not what the writer wanted to focus on in the marketing. Since Invader Pants was confirmed to not be reworked, I think this Space Bob Mary Pants advertising name is just a reference to the scrapped episode's title, as this is something completely different. Season 9 also had the 200th production episode of the series, which individually was episode 381, Goodbye Krabby Patty. In December 2022, this image showed up on Discord, and the original episode was Best Friends For Never. Spongebob and Patrick realize that sponges and starfish aren't normally friends, which tears their friendship apart, as well as all of Bikini Bottom. Me personally, I don't like the premise of this, cause it sounds a little basic and uninteresting, and I'm glad it was scrapped and we got Goodbye Krabby Patty instead. Going back to season 11, there was also an episode planned called Krusty Krab Bed and Breakfast. This episode was confirmed by Nickelodeon Poland Sitemap. Vincent Waller said the episode was real, just under a different working title. It never came to exist, but part of that idea resurfaced way later for episode 573, Necro Nom 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 It Con from season 14, where Mr. Krabs gets the idea to start serving breakfast foods at the Krusty Krab. Speaking of episodes we don't know much about, Village Idiots. This was a placeholder title for an episode from season 11, but it was later confirmed to be a working title for episode 464, The Nitwitting from season 12. Hmm. There was also an episode called Pineapple Panic, which was about Spongebob's pineapple growing over the entire town, causing everybody to panic. Ah, that's why they called it Pineapple Panic. Vincent Waller confirmed it to be real, but it was scrapped. I can see why, because this basic premise doesn't explain how the pineapple grew in the first place. It also sounds similar to episode 319, the Krabby Patty that ate Bikini Bottom from season 8, where Mr. Krabs dumps Sandy's growth serum on a Krabby Patty, which caused it to grow out of control and destroy Bikini Bottom. We also have some outlines for episodes, some of which were sold on eBay a while back. A lot of these episodes were produced back in the late 2000s, early 2010s. One of these episodes is called Pineapple Princess and was written by Richard Purcell. It was originally supposed to be a part of Season 8. While blowing bubbles, Spongebob meets the princess of a place called Bikini Top and her three minions. He shows the princess her pineapple home and the minions run away. The princess remodels the house like a palace and hires Patrick as a guard. He and Spongebob take the princess to the Krusty Krab and she eats Krabby Patties. 
SpongeBob sees missing posters and finds out she left against the king's will. The princess didn't want to go home because her dad made her eat nothing but pineapple foods. When SpongeBob and Patrick take her home, they find out her home was the Bikini Top grocery store and the king was just an overweight man laying in a lawn chair shooting commercials for the store. He was thankful for SpongeBob and Patrick returning her daughter, but he makes her make them pineapple lattes and she threatens to run away again. After going through all that, it sure feels like a season 8 episode, alright? The twist at the end is kinda dumb, and I question where the three minions came from if the king was just an overweight actor shooting commercials. And was this princess really a princess or just a snobby teenage girl who started to hate her dad because of the pineapple based foods? It's hard to tell based on the outline alone. And the most interesting thing about this episode in my opinion is the other location, Bikini Top. So overall, I can see why this was cut, but I do hope we'll get to see that Bikini Top town sometime. We have a strange episode from season 11, episode 430, Pat the Horse, where Patrick wants to be a horse, and a bad episode from season 13, episode 515, Pat the Dog, where Patrick eats worm food and starts behaving like a worm. But what about a cancelled episode called My Pet Pat? This was originally supposed to be a 22 minute episode for season 7, written by Derek Iverson. Patrick is holding up a line at the Krusty Krab by asking stupid questions. Squidward says bad things about him and the other people in line agree. Patrick discovers Mr. Krabs put a sign on his back advertising the Krusty Krab. Patrick was enraged and leaves. Swindell so feels sorry for Patrick. Later, Patrick sees a commercial for a respect coach, but it was a trap. Patrick gets kidnapped by poachers and sold to new owners, who we don't see the faces of. They give him a collar and treat him like a pet. Swindell finds out that Patrick was kidnapped and finds him after searching for several days. He tries to bring Patrick home, but Patrick doesn't want to leave. So Spongebob disguises himself as a starfish to stay with Patrick since these new owners view all other creatures as food. Even whales? Only the first page is shown clearly, so this is all I can see. And going by this, it does sound rather boring and a little stupid. Maybe it could have worked as an 11 minute episode, but not a 22 minute episode. But I can almost see this episode being remade as a season 13 or 14 outing. And I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Episode 163, Boat Smarts from Season 5, was a 4 minute episode being a driving instructor film similar to the tips of how to work at the Krusty Krab from Episode 100, Krusty Krab training video from Season 3. But this next cancelled episode is called Red Riptides. This was going to be a short 4 minute episode from Season 5 about a driving instructor film showcasing boating accidents written by Richard Purcell. Mrs. Pop shows a film about boating accidents narrated by Officer Coral. When the title appears after a few accidents, we see SpongeBob's imagination where he crashes into an immovable toll. The film ends hoping the viewer won't have to be rescued by the jaws of life. SpongeBob becomes tangled in his desk out of fear, so Mrs. Puff unties him, and then SpongeBob leaps around the school and out the door, inflating Mrs. Puff, who hopes that would scare SpongeBob out of driving and the episode would end with her winking at the audience. From the looks of the outline, this seems to be just a draft version of Boat Smarts. They probably scrapped this because it seems to feel just pointless. Mrs. Pub shows SpongeBob a scary film that hopes he won't want to drive anymore. That probably won't work because he'll show up later that season anyway to continue failing. At least Boat Smarts provided some safety tips using Squidward as a good driver and Spongebob as a bad one. Like how Krusty Krab training video had Spongebob as a good employee and Squidward as a bad one. But Red Riptides doesn't have anything going for it, so it makes sense why it was cancelled. Continuing with Season 5, there's also Camp Head Trauma, a 7 minute episode outlined by Danny Mike Kelly. This episode focuses on summer camp. Patrick visited Spongebob as he was practicing animal calls. Spongebob says he's going to fulfill his lifelong dream of going to camp. That's his lifelong dream? Patrick comes with him and they were very excited. But on their first day, they get bullied ruthlessly by the other campers, scared from a camp counselor's story about a zombie hyena fish, made fun of by the other campers for believing in the tale in the first place, and bitten by tiny chiggerfish while they're trying to sleep. The next day, they get their swimsuits stolen so they swim in their underwear, get sunburned and humiliated, and we're told that nobody likes them. 
SpongeBob and Patrick decide to go home, but notice a flyer for a talent show. They decide to stay for that. SpongeBob tries doing an animal call, and the zombie hyena fish from the story shows its face and tries to attack everybody at the camp except for SpongeBob and Patrick. So SpongeBob does a mountain lion call, which scares the zombie hyena fish away. SpongeBob and Patrick are deemed as heroes and are now enjoying the camp. This episode sounds pretty good, honestly. A little mean spirited, sure, but things do work out for our heroes at the end. I think I would have liked to see this episode in real life, and I think it would work better as a full 11 minute episode instead of only 7 minutes. But it seems to have been scrapped and replaced with episode 187, The Inmates of Summer, where SpongeBob and Patrick board a prisoner boat instead of their summer camp boat and end up on Infernal Island. Great. Both episodes are still better than Camp Coral though. Sponge Sprite was supposed to be a Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy episode from season 7, roughly 7 to 8 minutes long, and written by Danny Mike Kelly. SpongeBob and Patrick receive a VHS tape with a lost Murray Man and Barnacle Boy episode, an intro for the series inspired by Filmation and 1960s Hanna-Barbera was shown. The episode has Murray Man and Barnacle Boy saving a little Sponge Boy who looks similar to SpongeBob from Cyborg Sea Turtles. After the fight, the Sponge Boy makes a pest of himself and follows the heroes around. He causes a streak of bad luck for them involving the invisible boatmobile. He soon reveals himself as an interdimensional sprite with reality altering powers. This sprite would have been a mashup of Q from Star Trek The Next Generation, Mr. Impossible, Batmite, and Mr. MXYZPTLK. The Cyborg Turtles return and Barnacle Boy communicates with them and finds out their interdimensional parole officers coming to take the Sponge Boy and return him from whence they came. The heroes and turtle officers team up and triumph over the Sponge Boy and the turtles take him away. The Sponge Boy is annoyed and vows to return and annoy Merry Man and Barnacle Boy more. The episode ends and SpongeBob and Patrick loved it but thought the Sponge Sprite was a bit off and they rewind the tape and start again. This premise sounds pretty interesting. The twist with the sponge sprite sounds cool, and I would have loved to see the designs of the cyborg turtles and the true form of the interdimensional sprite when he reveals himself, as well as the intro inspired by 1960s Hanna-Barbera. This was seemingly scrapped and replaced with episode 260, The Bad Guy Club for Villains, which had the same runtime, also focuses on a lost Murray Man of Arnold Boy episode, with this episode having returning villains like the Sinister Slug and Atomic Flounder, and the International Justice Lodge of Super Acquaintances. I do like that episode, but to an extent, I wish Sponge Sprite could have been made. Maybe it could have been remade in season 8, and have this not be a lost episode, and maybe an episode they haven't seen for years, or maybe the original long lost pilot of the show or something. Speaking of season 8, Serpent Turf was an episode concepted for season 8, and was written by Richard Purcell. This would have been about Mr. Krabs making Spongebob sell Krabby Patties on the surface, by stealing one of Sandy's extra helmets and rigging a bathysphere dumb waiter to send extra patties and supplies up to Spongebob. The patties become a hit, but an animated character named Sal Sandollar, who has his own restaurant, Sal Sandollar's Taco Hut, becomes mad with the new competition and tries to stop Spongebob from selling Krabby Patties. Meanwhile, Sandy discovers what Mr. Krabs has done and becomes f***ing pissed. Sal tries slashing prices to get customers back, but that doesn't work, so he tries a Krabby Patty to see what the fuss was about, and saw how good they were. When the bathysphere dumb waiter returns with more supplies, Sal steals the Krabby Patty meat for his tacos and cuts the cord to send Spongebob back to Bikini Bottom. Sandy catches him, and Spongebob explains what happened. Mr. Krabs leads a retaliation war against Sal, and they go to the surface with water helmets on. The beachgoers flee when they see the sea creatures come up and drop their money. Sal hangs a trophy in Mr. Krabs' office, and SpongeBob and the others enjoy a Krabby Taco Fest. This episode has a lot going on. It's interesting to see Mr. Krabs try and sell Krabby Patties on the surface, and the way he accomplishes it is kinda clever, even if I have no f clue what a bathysphere dumb waiter is. Seeing Mr. Krabs get his comeuppance for his actions would have been greatly satisfying to see. And Sal using the Krabby Patty meat for his tacos, I'm surprised the show hasn't tried doing that idea for a standalone episode yet. Using the Krabby Patty meat for tacos makes too much sense if you ask me. 
I don't know why this was cancelled because this sounds like a fun watch. Last but not least, we also have an episode called A Day in the Life of Plankton. This was confirmed by Adam Paloian, a storyboard artist who mostly worked on Spongebob from seasons 10, 11, and 12. This episode would have focused on what Plankton does when he doesn't try to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. The humor would have come from Plankton trying to kill time and do chores. I imagine this was cut because even Adam himself said that this episode was rather mundane. Now we also got episode 159, Rise and Shine from season 5, where we see what Patrick does in the morning, and that episode wasn't that great either. Okay breakfast, get on the plate, come on, get on there. So that's probably another reason why this one was cut. And there we have it, a look into cancelled Spongebob episodes. It's interesting knowing that there were this many episodes that ended up being cancelled. It's actually way more than I thought there would have been. With all the seasons and episodes that we do have these days, I'm a little surprised that there were this many episodes that were cancelled, seeing as how we've had episodes with reused and recycled plotlines and storylines, episodes that were pulled from their initial release date, and episodes that were just flat out horrible as well as Nickelodeon being greedy and doing whatever they can possibly think of or want to with Spongebob these days. But it's always fun looking and seeing what they did have planned at one point that ultimately never saw the light of day. Maybe someday there will be more to talk about, but for now, this is a good place to stop. And it's good the Metroid series wasn't cancelled like all these episodes were.